Hello, and welcome to your first lecture for College Algebra. My name is Callie Dampierre. I will be your instructor, and I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know what I have with me. I have a calculator. My calculator is a TI-82 because it was the one that my grocery store had. If you don't have a calculator, you need a scientific calculator, not necessarily a graphing calculator. We'll do all of our graphing on, the, on a website called desmos.com. So if you're looking for a calculator, you can get the TI-30XS MultiView. It is $18 and it's very easy to use right out of the box, but any TI-84 will also look like mine. Um, 82 will look like mine. Any calculator you're using um, might be fine. If you have questions, you can email me. I also printed off the notes. So on Blackboard, you will have PDFs of each lecture day. You are welcome to print off those notes or you're welcome to take notes by hand. It is essential that you take notes. Don't write down everything I write down. If you already know it, don't write it down. But if it's new to you or you need to remember it, do write it down, okay? Um, we will be doing homework, we'll be doing quizzes, and we'll be doing exams. The homework grade won't go into Blackboard until the end of the unit, but the due dates, even though it's all one grade at the end of the unit. The due dates in my math lab or on the course schedule um, should be followed because you won't be able to open your assignments after the due date for that assignment. Please email me if you have any questions as we go through this video um, or anything comes up, you need any clarity. I'm gonna switch screens so that you can see what will usually look like. So. Most of our class time will be spent like this. Um, you'll be looking at my hands. I apologize. <clears throat> so R2 is a lecture, and then R2 is also an assignment in my math lab. You are welcome to open up this video and, at, and open up my math lab and do them side by side, however you would like to do it. But basically, these notes are going to help you with R2 in my math lab. All right. Today, we're going to talk about inequalities, absolute value, distance between two points, the domain, laws of exponents, and evaluating expressions, possibly. I don't think so, though. All right. So let's jump right in. These, all of the R assignments, the R stands for review. So we're just going to be quickly jumping from topic to topic. There's not a lot of connection between R2 and R3, for example. Um, this will be the only unit that is so, so broad kind of challenging in that sense, in my opinion. All right. So what are inequalities? Inequalities use the greater than symbol or the less than symbol, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. <laughs> Missing a little bar. All right. So on the real number line, graph all numbers x for which x is greater than negative one. So let's talk about how to graph an inequality on a number line, okay? If you have, and it kind of depends, but this is true for my math lab. So if you have an inequality that does not have an equal sign, this one includes an equal to, right? The equal to is that bottom part. Equal to means it has an equal sign, right? If it is equal to, the symbol we want to use for equal to is brackets. Okay, so we're gonna put those numbers in brackets. However, if it is not equal to, just greater than or just less than, regular parentheses. Okay, and this will make more sense. Greater than or less than, we just do the regular parentheses. Greater than or equal to, we do brackets. Less than or equal to, we do brackets, okay? X is greater than negative one. Okay, let's think about this. Here is negative infinity. Here is positive infinity as we go to that direction, right? If we just keep counting forever, we'll, it's towards infinity. If we go to the left forever, it's to negative infinity, okay? Greater than. Greater than does not include equal to, so it's not going to be a bracket. It's going to be a parenthesis, so it's either going to open this way or open this way, because it's greater than, it's always going to open this way, okay? So greater than negative one, 
looks like this. Okay. What is greater than negative one? Zero is greater than negative one. One is greater than negative one. So we have that symbol. And then we just draw an arrow towards infinity. Doesn't even have to be a long arrow. It just has to be an arrow. Okay. On the real number line, graph all numbers x for which x is less than or equal to four. So let's look at this less than or equal to, because it has the equal to, we're going to do brackets. Less than means it's going that way. So it's going to start here. Less than or equal to, ooh, sorry, not negative four, positive four. Ignore that. Less than or equal to positive four. Again, you need an arrow and a bracket. All right. Let's talk about greater than. greater than as a graph is always going to look like this, right? Because it's going to be opening towards positive infinity and we have to use parentheses, okay? Um, you may have learned it as open circle arrow, okay? Less than, same parentheses, but now we're going towards negative infinity. So open circle towards negative infinity is how it might've been in your last math class. Greater than or equal to that same direction, right? We're getting bigger, but we're not using the parentheses. We're using the bracket less than or equal to, same bracket, but we're going the other direction. And again, the symbols for this are, this is greater than, this is less than, this is greater than or equal to, this is less than or equal to, okay? Oh, sorry, I forgot these. So this would be a closed circle and an arrow, a closed circle and an arrow. Absolute value of a real number A, denoted by the symbol A inside the absolute value bars, is defined as the distance between zero and that number A on a number line, okay? So think about the center of a number line is zero, because zero is not negative or positive. And then you have, here we have seven, right? The absolute value of seven is asking you, how far away is seven from zero? it's seven units, okay? How far away is negative seven from zero? Also seven units. So I know you think of absolute value as it's always positive. It's always, what I like to say is it's always a distance, okay? And distance is never, ne never negative. If I'm at my house and I'm going to school and I drive three miles, right? I went three miles that way. If I go three miles backwards, even if I do drive backwards, I didn't go negative three miles, right? I went another positive three miles. So distance is always positive or zero. So that's why an absolute value is always positive or zero. It's never a negative number. Okay. Left to right. This is seven inches right to left. It's still seven inches, right? It's not negative. The distance between two points. If P and Q are two points on a number line, the distance between P and Q is the absolute value of P minus Q, okay? Find the distance between P and Q. So P is negative four and Q is three. We're gonna subtract them and take the absolute value. The absolute value of negative four minus three is a negative seven. The absolute value of negative seven is positive seven. Similarly, when I count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When I count it by hand, it's also seven. Also, it doesn't matter whether you say P minus Q or Q minus P. It's gonna give you the same answer, right? Negative four minus three, or you could say, <clears throat> three minus negative four, which is the absolute value of positive seven, which is still seven, okay? What about Q and R, another example? Q 
and r. So that's going to be the absolute value of q is 3, r is 1, 3 minus a negative 1 is 4, because minusing, subtracting a negative is a positive. The absolute value of 4 is 4, or I can just count it between r, q and r. 1, 2, 3, 4. Distance between two points. We are evaluating expressions, I apologize. All right, to evaluate an expression, substitute the given value in place of the variable using parentheses and follow the rules of PEMDAS or JEDMAS, alternately. I like to think of it as a tower because divide and multiply are, you, you just go right to left, left to right. Addition and subtraction, you just go left to right. G instead of the P is grouping symbols. E still stands for exponents. And then I write it vertically because B and M are at the same level and A and S are at the same level, okay? Make sure you just follow the rules of PEMDAS. When you are solving for X, for example, you do the reverse rules of PEMDAS, right? But we're not, we're substituting in and simplifying. So A says X plus two Y, right? X is two, Y is three. X is two. Y is three. Ooh, Y is negative three. Good thing you caught that. Good. All right. Simplify. That two, it's not touching anything, so it remains a two. Two times a negative three is a negative six. Good. It's still two. Sorry. So I just say two plus a negative six, which is two minus six which is negative four, okay? B, three, X, Y, when they're right next to each other, it means multiply as we know. So it's gonna be three times two times negative three. So again, when you see multiplication, just go left to right, three times two is six times negative three, or do it all at once in your calculator if you want. Uh, six times negative three is a negative 18. C is 2y over 3 minus 3x. I want you to understand that this is a grouping symbol, okay? Grouping symbols can be actual parentheses. They can be numbers under a radical. And they can be on the bottom or on the top of a division bar, okay? So this is a grouping symbol. I want to get it as simple as I can before I combine it with the 2y, okay? So now that's 2 y is still negative 3, 2 times negative 3. That division bar is also, or sorry, that fraction bar is also division bar. 3 minus 3 times 2. That is negative 6. 3 minus 3 times 2 is a 3 minus 6. Again, don't divide, subtract first because it's a group. 3 minus 6 is a negative 3. Negative six is a negative six. Negative six divided by negative three is, well, you could just say I can divide them both by three, right? Negative six divided by three is a negative two. Negative three divided by negative three is a negative one. Negative two divided by negative one is a positive two. Or negative six divided by negative three is two. D has absolute value bars. So absolute value of negative three X plus Y Substitute negative three times two plus negative three. That's a grouping symbol there too. Negative three times two is a negative six plus a negative three is a negative minus three. So that's the absolute value of negative nine. The absolute value is distance. So negative nine to zero is nine units. Good. All right, evaluating expression. The domain of a variable, the set of values that a variable may assume, okay? Restrict, omit any values that result in division by zero. 
results taking the even root of a negative number. Okay, so when you look at the domain of something, if it's something simple like 3x plus 7, you just say it's all real numbers, okay? The domain is all real numbers. And the way we write that is the domain is x such that x is a real number, okay? So in most circumstances, the domain is all real numbers, but we don't want a zero under the fraction bar. And, oh, it's not coming up, but we don't want a negative number under the radical, okay? So for A, we have a variable on, that would be, um, that we don't want to be, we have a variable in the denominator, we'll say. Okay, so what you want to do when you have a variable in the denominator is you take that, and you're just finding the domain, you take that variable, I'm going to write the whole thing, 4 over x minus 3, take that denominator, x minus 3, set it equal to 0, okay? Solve it for x, and that is omitted from your domain, okay? If nothing is omitted, you just say it's a real number. x minus 3. Solve for x, and we get x is 3. So our domain is x such that x cannot be 3. That's the only thing it cannot be, OK? It can be negative 3. It can be 0. It cannot be negative 3. Let's look at b. We have x plus 1 in the numerator, and we have x plus 5 in the denominator. It does not matter if this is 0, right? You can divide 0 by a number. 0 divided by 8 is 0, but 8 divided by 0 is not a real answer, OK? So it doesn't matter. This variable does not matter. The only va variable that matters is a variable that would be in the denominator or a variable that would be under an even root, okay? So we're going to say x plus 5, and we're going to set it equal to 0. That means we subtract 5, subtract 5, and we say x cannot be, or x is negative 5 when the denominator is 0. So we say our domain is x such that x cannot be negative 5. C, we already know, is all real numbers. There's more than one way to write it. <laughs> all real numbers is a real number, OK? And then D. X over X squared minus four. Okay, same thing. We just want to take that denominator, set it equal to zero. Okay, first step, add four. Now I have X squared is four. Okay, to get rid of a square root, I need to take, or sorry, to get rid of a square, I need to take the square root of that number. So the square root of x squared and also the square root of 4. Anytime you're taking the square root in order to solve for an, a squared, you need to put the positive and the negative answer. So the square root of x squared just leaves me with x. But over here, I have the positive or negative square root of 4. Let's look at what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2, OK? And we said it's negative 2 and 2, the positive and the negative, because 2 squared is 4 and negative 2 squared is 4. There are two different ways to get 4 by squaring a number. There are two different numbers you can square, and both numbers give you a positive 4. So we're going to say x is negative 2 and x is 2. Therefore, my domain is x such that x cannot be negative 2 or 2.
That is how we're doing domain, okay? That will show up a lot throughout the semester. Let's do some laws of exponents. When you are combining the same base through multiplication, you can add the exponents. When you are taking an exponent to the power of an exponent, you multiply the exponents. I know this is hard to see. You can distribute an exponent with parentheses, just like anything else in, outside parentheses. A to the power of, or sorry, the base to the power of an exponent divided by the base to the power of a different exponent, you can subtract the exponents. And again, you can distribute them. And anytime you have a negative exponent, you can move it across the fraction bar to make it a positive exponent, okay? We know the laws of exponents. If you don't, you can Google them. Um, and then anything to the zero power is one. So we're just gonna use those to simplify A, B, C, D, E, and F, okay? All right, so we have x to the negative three times x to the fifth. That is the same as a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So we have the same base and we're gonna say negative three plus five now. So it's just x squared is how simple, how I would simplify that, okay? Here we have the base of x to the negative three raised to the power of two. So I'm gonna multiply negative three times two and I'm gonna get negative six. Here I have two to the power of three, x to the power of three. I can simplify two to the power of three. It's eight, so that simplifies to eight x to the third. I'm just distributing that three through my um, parentheses. Here I have two thirds to the power of four. I can call that two to the fourth over three to the fourth, two to the fourth, is 16, three to the fourth is 81. So we can also call that 16 over 81. Good. Those um, <clears throat> are not the same base, so we can't just subtract four minus four is zero, but here we have the same base. So we're gonna call this X negative two minus negative five, okay? Because A to the power of M divided by A to the power of N is equal to A to the power of M minus N. So, x negative two minus negative five. Don't hesitate to put that into your calculator. You just get x to the positive three, okay? Because subtracting a negative gives you a positive. So five minus two is three. Here we have y to the x to the fifth over x to the third. And we have y to the negative second over y. Okay, so I'm just gonna separate those out x to the fifth over x to the third. Good. And then we have y If it's a negative one, you want to put it under the fraction bar. Okay, so that's my final answer for that last example, because it was going to be x squared y to the negative one, but I don't want a negative in my answer, so I put it x squared over y to the positive. Good. Finally, the last thing we're going to cover is principal square roots. So just like I said that x squared equals four, and to take the square root of that, I had to say plus and minus. So x is plus two and negative two. The principal square root is the positive, okay? They're both, when you take negative two and square it, you get four, and when you take positive two and square it, you get four. So it's they're both square roots, but the principal square root is going to be your positive one. It's going to be the only one that your calculator shows. The square root of 36 is 6, even though 6 squared is 36 and negative 6 squared is 36. Good. So the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 4 over 25 is the square root of 4 is 2, right? And the square root of 25 is... Five. 
So it's just two fifths. The square root of four squared is just gonna be four because that square root cancels that square. The square root of negative four, negative four squared is a positive 16, the square root of 16 is four. So that becomes a positive. The square root of y squared, again, they just cancel each other out, is y, okay? The square root of a number squared is the absolute value of that number. So we don't take, we don't say it's negative four, we say it's positive four, we say it's the absolute value of that original a, okay? And that is all for your first lecture. Again, email me if you have any questions and thank you so much.